Hello and welcome to my channel. Let's get started with this tutorial. So it's a painting tutorial I'm using acrylic paint and I've sprayed my 11 by 14 inch canvas with a little bit of water just so I can more easily blend my paint onto the canvas. This particular paintbrush I'm using, it's a number two, it's kind of a cheap brush and it doesn't hold a lot of paint or water in it. So that means I do need to keep dipping into my paint. So what colors am I using in this? tutorial. You don't have to use exact ones, but just so you know, <laughs> I'm going to try and say which ones they are. One of them is ultramarine, which is not too hard to say. So ultramarine blue, that's actually semi-transparent. I didn't even check that in when I was buying it. So you can check if it's opaque or semi-transparent. And also, uh, I'm going to try and say this though. I don't know how to say it properly. Uh, thalo cyanine blue. Did I say that right? I'm not sure, but I think this one is more, this one's opaque. And then also I have a cobalt blue, but currently I'm just mixing the first two blues, the blues, mix the blues, and kind of going around my edges. So the top and the sides, as well as along the top of the painting and along the bottom. So we're kind of doing a reflection type of thing happening here. We've got the sky, we've got the water, there's gonna be a sunrise or sunset, I'm not sure which one, and you get to choose that. I'm calling it a sunrise because I think it's more positive in some way. That's just how I like to think. And then we're gonna have this really cool dock coming out from the center. Uh, mine's gonna be offside. You can make your central uh, centered if you like. Uh, and then now I'm adding in the white in the center of this piece, and then I'll be mixing in this other blue, this cobalt blue. So some blue, cobalt blue with white, blending into the wet paint of the other blues so that I have that nice gradual change of color and tone. So it's nice um, bright blue at the top and the bottom. And if you mix white within those top and bottom parts, you're gonna have less of an intensity, that chroma is going to be uh, diminished a little bit, which sometimes is good. Sometimes we don't want that. So in this case, I do want brighter blues at the tops and the bottom, but I will mix a little bit just so that some of that streakiness, because I was using partially a semi, semi-transparent paint, that it wasn't blending quite well. So I thought, okay, you know what? Let's just add in a little bit of white because that helps with the opaqueness and helps to cover the piece better. So I hope you can see it well. I know that the lighting is a little bit off, but it's trying to figure out how to set up my easel properly so I can still paint comfortably and and that you can also see what I'm doing. So it's kind of a gamble because if I want it straight on, then the camera is kind of in my way. <laughs> so I do apologize if the lighting's a little bit off. If you have some tips for me, hey, feel free to comment. I'm kind of new to this and <laughs> As I say that, my painting almost falls off my canvas. I let it dry in between layers so that I can do a layer on top of it. As your paint starts to dry, sometimes it gets a little sticky and you kind of need to let things dry and then do a layer on top, so another coat. Uh, it's kind of like if you're doing painting your nails, if you've ever had this experience of painting your nails and you're trying to wait till it dries and if you don't wait till it fully dries, then you get kind of sticky mess and ruin your nail polish and have to redo it. So that can happen with paint. You can also accidentally lift paint if it's still wet and you haven't let it dry. I decided I wanted this to be even lighter. So I'm making it, you know, going in lighter with uh, white and still mixing in with these other blues. Eventually I hope to be able to also share what it looks like when I'm mixing my paint on my palette because I think that's also a pretty important part of the skill of painting is learning to mix color and understanding how I'm approaching that. And I do that as well a lot on my Skillshare channel. My Skillshare, it's not a channel, it's a <laughs> platform. So on my Skillshare, I teach drawing and painting classes there. And so if you want to check that out, you can see what I've got going on there um, with more detail, things sometimes slower and, and exercises to learn. And I'm actually working right now on a color mixing class. So maybe when you're watching this, it might already be done, who knows? So if you're interested in taking some classes with me, check out my description of this video. I'll have the link to my Skillshare and it gives you access to the premium 
for right now, a month for free. Sometimes it's only two weeks. So right now it's a month. You can have free access. You can take pretty much all my classes right now that I have there, which I have six or seven classes. I think I'm working on my seventh class right now. So you can have six classes for free if you work quickly through them. <laughs> Painting and drawing, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, let's get back to this piece. I'm just working through the whole blending scenario. So making sure that my brush has enough paint on it, as well as this drying time. With acrylics, paint dries really quickly. So you have to work quickly to get it blended with wet on wet, if that's what you want. That's why I sprayed it with water in the beginning. And as I'm working and I feel my brush getting a little bit dry, if it's not moving smoothly across my canvas, then I dip it in the water and I make sure it's not dripping. So you kind of just wipe it on the side of the, the edge of the glass or contain, water container that you're using. Now I've mixed here some black, but I haven't just used black. Now you can, but I kind of like to mix my own black by mixing some red with blue and maybe just a touch of black. If you experiment in your sketchbook with mixing your own black or dark tones instead of just using straight black and then you mix a little bit of white into it you'll see why it's more exciting to use color and a deep form of the color like basically a dark purple it's more interesting or even a dark brown because then when you add a little bit of white you have this exciting color not just gray it is a touch of gray in there but if you were to try this experiment side by side Take your black, mix a little bit of white in it. Take this red and blue mixture, mix a little bit of white in it. You'll see a huge difference. And I think there's more depth to it. So I'm taking that color and I'm creating a bit of a background going on. So we've got some land in the back that extends on the right and on the left. So giving some space in the middle to show maybe there's a waterway that goes there. I'm taking a stiffer brush now, and it's a smaller one as well. I think it's only about a half inch. And I'm kind of stamping or stippling and leaving lots of space from the background behind it. And then I'm going to create kind of, there's some trees on this side and creating the reflection. Now, if you're struggling with creating a reflection, one thing you can do is turn your painting on the side and then it's some might be easier for you to tell, to figure out where to put the the blotches that will match the top. And then I went in with a fan brush and just stroke side to side. You can also put a little tiny bit of white or blue in your fan brush and then just brush it across very lightly and not too much. You don't want it to blend and smear too much. You just want it to kind of graze the top and create these little reflections of light and this is really only if you want it to have a bit of a blur if it's slightly windy out maybe there's a boat that was moving around and causing a ripple and i'm doing the same thing on the other side so i'm recreating that and notice how i've left just a tiny little bit of the background between the two reflection so between the reflections uh, on the right side, there's just a little strip of, almost looks white. And that's just from the background, I've left that in. And you notice on the left, I didn't do the <laughs> reflection of the ground. I remember to do this later, so don't worry. Then I'm gonna take some white and blend it with those colors. And now it's creating this beautiful gray that has kind of purple tones in it. And then we're, I'm doing kind of these mountains that are in the background, way in the background. And by making them lighter, it will help the eye realize, okay, that is further behind. That is in the background. So by just adding a bit of white, that helps us recognize that. And then once you've put that on, you can add more white onto your brush and blend areas so that you have highlighting happening. That, you know, if it's mountains, there's areas of them that will hit the light differently than other parts. Or maybe there's just a misty cloud in there and so <laughs> there's some mist happening. That could be it too. Play around, have some fun with it. You can make them larger. I've kept mine pretty small uh, to have more emphasis on what the foreground has to offer in this piece. 
So just kind of blending in a little bit. The more you brush, the more it blends. So keep that in mind. If you like something, then stop brushing it. <laughs> because if you keep wiping the brush, sweeping it across it, it will continue to blend until it's too dry, until the paint gets sticky, that kind of thing. So keeping your brush wet if you're still working with it is important. You don't really see that part of my process because my water jar is behind me. My palette is below me. You can kind of see my palette and I'm continuing this whole reflection idea. You have to stay consistent is the idea. So if I've started using rippling through the water, then I need to continue that. I can't have part of it unless it's literally a rock hitting the water on one end and not touching the other ends yet, then that would be different. I'm using a bit of white to kind of create those rippling effects with my fan brush, just lightly sweeping across. You can hold your brush horizontally or vertically to create that look. Now you're noticing I'm going in there and getting more <laughs> the reflection a little bit better in certain areas, fixing it up nicely till I feel satisfied with it. There's a certain satisfaction when you look at the piece and you feel good about it. That's kind of your intuition telling you, yeah, this is, this is good. This is right. And it just depends on the purpose of the piece. Maybe you want it to just be a moment of art therapy where you're just having fun and working in a free way. Well, then just don't fixate too much on detail and just be more free. But if you're trying to really depict something, you know, photographic realism, then you're going to take it 10 steps beyond what I've done here. <laughs> And in our trees, we need some branches. We can't forget little branches. Don't go overboard with the branches. Just, just barely peeking through areas that are holding up the leaves that we see already. So we just want to carefully pull them into the scene, into some of the spaces so we don't have a floaty leaf section. There'll be areas where you won't see the branches, so you don't have to have a fully realized tree branch unless there were no leaves. That's kind of the beauty of having a tree that has leaves on it. You don't have to draw all the branches. Many of them are hidden, and it would just really take away from it if I just started clunking out those in there. Okay, here comes the fun. Here comes the complementary colors. We're mixing yellow, we're mixing red, we're mixing pink and white. And we're making a beautiful sunrise or sunset, whatever your choice. <laughs> I'm calling it a sunrise. I'm taking my, again, still working with that one. I did the stamping with the leaves. And I'm going to just brush in using kind of the corner of my brush because if I stick with just the flat end with it, then it might look too rectangular or straight or flat. So I'm using it on the corner a little bit and I'm following the image that I have, a reference image that I'm using. And I'm trying to just bring it into the scene carefully, layer upon layer. So first I'm kind of blocking out where I want it to be. And then once it's in its place, then I can add more layers of color, some highlighting, low lighting, shifting the color, that type of thing. Some of it I want to do wet on wet. Some of it it's okay if it's dry. So I'm going to work with this pink, pinky yellow coral color. I'll let you know what colors I used. So, and brands, I use mostly artist level two or professional. I don't like going lesser quality than that. I like to maintain my quality. You're going to be much happier with your work if you have a little bit of quality with your paints. So the red that I used was a cadmium red hue and it was a semi-opaque. Again, you don't have to use these exact ones. You can make a coral color that you could be happy with without these specific colors. You could use, because you could use a different red and it would just be fine. Mix it with white, get some yellow. This one's a cadmium yellow medium hue opaque. And then I also used a pink. It was a medium magenta. And let me see. It's a different brand. I'm trying to figure out if it's, oh, it's translucent. Really? 
Interesting. Very hard to read this print on this bottle. <laughs> I guess I'm aging. And then also the white that I'm using is a titanium white and it is opaque. I do like using an opaque white, but you can play around with different things. See what works for you. Play around in your sketchbook first if you're unsure and then go on with that. Once you put your paint onto the canvas, you'll, you'll see immediately if you need to shift it. That's how I feel. When I first put it on, I thought, whoa, okay, this is a little too yellowy orangey for me. I wanted a little bit more pink coral color. So that's why I threw in that magenta and I mixed that in and I ended up using quite a bit of ratio of magenta in the mix. So you could almost just do magenta with white and add a tiny bit of yellow just a tiny bit and get a beautiful coral color. What's really fun and I haven't put it into the painting yet is where we have the sun just popping by this little hill area. And so I'm starting to realize that now with it and this area is gonna be more orangey. So that's why I like having the pink further away and then it gets more deep into this bright orange, not really a deep orange. It's still pretty pale, um, but I'm going to be adding some yellows as well with the white. And I'm gonna do this in a layering fashion. So once I get this area, kind of that orange throughout it, I will add some white where I wanna have the brightest area. Just, just add the white. Once it dries, then I add the yellow on top. So you can also just mix some yellow, because I do have yellow mixed in that right now. Mix yellow with your white, and that will help, especially because it's opaque, it'll help lift it in front of that blue. Because unless you were to paint it first, you want to really have that on top of that blue. You don't want it to kind of leave a transparent look and have it look green. Uh, that's not what we're going for. That's not a terrible thing to happen, but for this particular scenario, I think I really don't want that. So I'm kind of blending it in using my cut. When I use a color, I like to use that color in all the areas that it's needed so that I've mixed the paint color once. I don't have to try and mix the exact same paint color again because with acrylics, it is a challenge. So I'm getting the top to match the bottom, the water. So I want the water matching my sky. It doesn't have to be perfectly matched, but to give that illusion, okay, clearly she's doing you know, a reflection. Clearly this is water, clearly this is a sky. So that I just don't want it to be in question. <laughs> so I'm adding highlights here and there, blending it in. Because my background is dry, you're not gonna have the same blending capabilities and capacity that you would if you if it was still wet. However, if it was wet and it's blending with blue, I don't want that either. So I'm using it on dry for that reason. Now, if you want, if you're getting kind of that bubbly textured look because of the way acrylics work, then you can take a clean brush, a soft clean brush and kind of blend away some of that kind of melt it into the background or erase it a little bit, and that will help. So I've used some chalk pastel to draw out my dock. And this one was from, I'm using the one from the photo, and it was this interesting dock that was on a really odd angle that is really unusual. Normally a dock fo photo that you see is just straight on, goes like a road, driving into the distance. but. I like to do things a little bit differently. And I like how this was odd, how it kind of came one way and then veered off to the side. So I like to be different, <laughs> try something different, it's fun. I'm going in with a brown right now, so I'll tell you what brown I'm using. But I would actually mix this with some black or the black mixture we used before with the blue and the red. So this is a burnt umber, so that's a pretty popular color. It has a bit of reddish in it. It's opaque as well. So if you're curious about what brands I like, I often use Liquitex. Uh, it's a pretty good 
I think student to professional grade, they do have professional ones with Liquitex, but they have the basics brand and I often use basics and I've been very happy with it. It's, you know, not so expensive. Um, you know, I don't want to be a starving artist. I like food too much. <laughs> so I do like the Liquitex basics. If you're looking for a good paint, I also will use the artist loft number two, and that's the uh, Michaels brand uh, of artist material. And I found that those work well also. I like their, their colors for that too. So yeah, that's what I like to use. If you're curious about what, if you've never bought any paints, you're just not sure where to start. That's where I would invest in is probably the Artist Loft number two or Liquitex number two. I think they're about the same price, so it's not hugely different with that. So as I'm, as my dock is still wet and it's drying pretty quickly, I'm going to go in with black because I would have, I should have really mixed black with it, with it before. I felt like the dock was a little, little too light and I wanted to work from dark um, forward on top with light. So that's what I would suggest is mix it with the dark and then just paint the whole thing. Um, and then, and then I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to do this step I'm doing right now, which is adding the black on top. Well, suddenly we have some highlight <laughs> and that's when my camera just decides, Hey, I'm going to stop now. And I don't notice that it's not recording. So that's what happens sometimes. So I'm creating the boards on this because it's a wooden dock and just going across, making my lines horizontal, matching the horizon line. And when you're doing the post, here's a tip. So follow the angle of the, to the distance of the point that you made, like first point perspective, one point perspective. If you haven't seen, I have a video, it's an older one. It's before I had editing software. So keep that in mind. <laughs> now I can edit videos. It's a bit better. Um, hopefully a lot better, but I do have a one point perspective video. So you can take a look at that, use that to create the correct way of moving in distance. The other thing is those posts. Do not put them out um, from the center of the dock and pulled out. You want them all parallel. So they're all going straight up and down all vertical. So I'm adding white to my brown mixture. I didn't clean my brush and that's what I did to create the highlight. And then I added red to that without washing my brush. And that's how I got that kind of reddish color, kind of pinky color for the dock. So some of the slabs were kind of this reddish color. Some of them were more of this whitish color kind of looked cream color, but really when I just mixed the brown black with a bit of white, it created that look for me. And you can just kind of play around with it, brushing, not painting each slab fully because I want to have that highlighting look to it. So I'm just making sure also that when you're going into it, something with a distance, uh, like train tracks, that kind of thing, the train tracks, they get closer as you go into the distance, they get closer to each other. They get smaller and closer to each other. So you can't make the distance the same for all the posts as you get to the distance into the background. They have to get closer together as well. I always paint what I see, not what I think I see. So I'm going off my reference photo and really, what do I see? Paint that. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, hmm, that blue section is pretty empty looking and I need to do something with that. So in a little bit, you'll see that I will do something with it. I wasn't sure, should I add a boat? Uh, so this event all came together because my wonderful niece wanted to paint with me. I was like, how lovely is that? She wants to paint with me. I love that. So she wanted to paint with me. We chose this picture together. I had a selection of photos that I looked at on Pexels. And so I love Pexels. I love to use photos that people want you to use, not stealing photography, not just using things, whatever I want, copying someone else's painting. So this is from a photograph I found on Pexels. So thank you for those of you who share your work 
on Pexels. Um, I really appreciate it. It gives me stuff I can work from that I don't have just lying around <laughs> or photos that I wouldn't have been able to take because I'm not close to these waterways and that type of thing. So I really appreciate that. So my niece came and painted with me. And so she was working on her piece. And at the end of this video, you will see her piece and how she did as well. And she did her dock going to the center and it really filled in the space a lot nicer. So her composition I thought was a bit better than mine. Um, but I kind of went with the photo and I didn't make it exactly like the photo. Um, but by adding these, re the reflection of some of the clouds, I think really helped the composition for mine here. Uh, whereas I was kind of feeling like, uh Oh, <laughs> what do I do with this? <laughs> I was getting unsure what to do. So once I pick up a color, when I do that little reflection area and it has this bright pink coral color, I might go back into some of my other areas where I have that and add a little extra, add a little something extra and make sure that it's well layered. So there's no blue showing underneath in most areas. And if there's a little bit of blue showing here and there, that's okay. You don't want it to look cartoon like, well, maybe you do, <laughs> I don't know, but I wasn't going for that. So if you have some blue showing underneath, that's great for areas where there's like a wispy cloud. But when it, where there's an intense amount of cloud, you want it to show intensity of color so we can layer upon that and then it will help to do that. It'll help cover it up. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's why I'm just adding more bits here and there thinking mm, that might look nice if I do that. <laughs> so final touches. It's this point of the painting where you kind of think, okay, what can I add to it that will make it better? what do I really love that I don't want to mess up? So I was looking at the whole scene and I just thought these mountains just felt like they needed some color too, because they're back there. And I feel like they're going to be hitting some of that, some of those sun rays, some of those colors will be reflecting onto them. So I didn't copy that from the picture because the image didn't have that, but we decided, both of us decided, Hey, my niece and I, these mountains, they need some color on them. They need some highlighting. So we're just gonna add a little bit of that. Some happy mountains. Touched with a little bit of light. Just the coral color that I made before and maybe a little bit of yellow in there as well. And just trying to think of where the sun is and how it would actually affect the things in the scene. Not everything is going to have these colors of light um, touching them. So I'm not going to bother doing that to the tree because the trees created a silhouette the way that the light is coming at it. So that gives us a perspective of where we're at in the scene and how close we are to the trees versus the mountains and all of that. I just think it's so soothing to paint water and I just really enjoy having images with water around me and nature and just being in nature itself is a wonderful experience. So I'm going to do my signature and I've been playing around with a bit of a different signature, something a little bit more scripted than um, blocky. Um, is that even the correct term? <laughs> So we'll see what I like. I know the quality doesn't seem that great. I do apologize for that, but I also wanted my niece to see what I was painting too. If you painted along with me, I'd love to see what you created. So tag me in your Instagram at KMOArtYYC or on Facebook, wherever you post your stuff, just tag me there and I will, I would love to see it and share it as well. So make sure you tag me so I can see it. So thanks so much for joining me on this painting. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. There's Charlie. He wants to say hello to you. Did you have fun? Yep. What was the best part? <laughs> what was your favorite part to paint? I liked the dock mm -hmm. or pier or...
I think Charlie likes it. <laughs> Is it good, Charlie? Yes. Oh, there's some love. <laughs>